Hey, what's up everybody? We're looking at a game from round 6 of the Geneva uh, FIDE tournament that is taking place. And uh, this game is between Alexander Grishuk with the white pieces at 27-24 FIDE rating. And with the black pieces is Timur Rajabov, 27-61. This was a good game, so let's hop right into it. Sicilian, knight f3, knight c6. Bishop b5, this is a good way uh, for people to um, avoid accelerated dragon uh, variations by snapping off the bishop. This is why many people will play the so-called hyper-accelerated dragon to avoid that line. They'll play the move g6, but of course, then white has other options, and then the cat and mouse game continues. Rajabov plays knight c6, bishop b5, g6, and then bishop takes c6, uh, b takes c6, castle, and then bishop g7. Here's the other line with uh, e6 earlier, because I, I didn't even mention that, but um, e6 is an option, but we're not talking about that one today because g6 was played, but e6 is another ma uh, big body of theory with that also. Anyway, g6 was played. Uh, castle, bishop, g7, rook, e1. And now, here, uh, I'm sorry, here, uh, white usually plays rook, e1, which was played in the game. Um, sometime he plays c3. And, and, and very, very rarely plays e5. They all kind of connect. But, um, you know, it's just better... Usually in practice is e3 is played. c3 has an idea of course of building up the big center usually with d4 e5 Keeps the knight from hopping out right away, but then this pawn Can come under attack before white can really establish the center. So usually at master practice you see just a strong rook e1 Knight h6 again here different um, uh, moves are uh, possible but knight h6 has a, a long and solid history again it prevents the knight from being um you know hit upon by future e5 moves keeps the diagonal open um, for this bishop and in some lines the pawn f pawn is going to move sometime to f6 and um and we'll see the other option in the game so c3 by gristic castles this h3, again, um, Grishik is just fortifying his center um, because eventually for a move like d4, there's no doubt that the um, this knight is going to be needed to hold the center. So h3 just prevents later on bishop landing on a, uh, g4. So f5 now. Now usually is usually you'll see f, the move f6. As in the game uh, Anishuk, um versus Lee Chow that took place in 2013. Same position, c3, f6. And the idea is to bring the knight to f7. And black remains very flexible uh, in the center. And as the, uh, where he wants to commit his central pawns. And this game wind up ending up in a draw. Just to give you an idea of the purpose of f6. Interesting pawn configuration from black. This game, again, is from FIDE World Cup 2013. This is uh, Etienne Bacro. Uh, I guess France is number two now, right? Since you have uh, Maxime Vachier Legrave as number one. Versus uh, Moisienko, who's a specialist in this opening. Again, f6 by Moisienko. D4. C takes d4, building up you know, that big center. And knight f7. Again, just remaining, excuse me, remaining, um, just maintaining uh, maximum flexibility with the central pawns. And notice here that uh, Moisienko doesn't um, put his pawn on e6. He leaves the some room for his bishop. And with that center that black possesses, it's very, it's very hard for white to uh, make progress. Even though aesthetically his pawn structure is great 
it's really hard for uh, him to do anything against the black pawn structure <clears throat> with those pawns on the uh, D and E files. Very hard for black to really, excuse me, white to utilize the center. This game also ended in a draw. This was between a player named uh, Ann Keat, who was 24.55, and uh, um, Grandmaster Felgeier, 25.69. Same scenario. So by now you get the point. And once I wanted to show you that because in the other games, White did not move his center. And you see that for good reason. So once he moves the center, then that bishop was able to shoot out. And that was one of the reasons behind the um, uh, Moisienko not playing e6. It just leaves options. In the first game, you saw uh, Anishuk play this move, which nothing was wrong with that. But here, just left more options open. And I just wanted to give you an example of the flexibility of uh, an idea behind knight f7. Now the move that was played in the game by Rajabov was f5. And um, this move of course is a little more incisive because black would love for uh, white to just take and open up the f-file. But um, in most cases uh, white is simply going to, to pursue the move e5. And it's funny because it seems like this move actually, um, f you know, uh, uh, provokes white to carry out his idea of of having a big center of e, e5 d4 etc so in this game uh which is uh the same play again uh ankit 2506 at this time in 2014 versus uh, kaido kulats and what happened here was e5 was played and there's that idea again knight f7 d4 c takes d4 c takes d4 and I'll just go through the games real quickly. The white center, although, you know, looking good right here, quickly came under uh, scrutiny by black. And the game quickly teetered out to a draw. So we went from white having a full center to uh, having nothing at all. And the game ended in uh, repetition here. So now that you have some of those ideas under your belt, now you'll perhaps be able to appreciate the game just a little bit more. As stated earlier, Grishtik played the move f5, e5, knight f7, and here, here, um, I'm sorry, Timor had played f5, uh, it's black, and then uh, Grishtik played e5, knight f7 from... Um, Rajabov, and now Grishtik played d3. Remember in the game I just showed you, that player had opted for the the large center. Um, I had the feeling, of course, that Grishtik has probably observed this game and preparing preparing for this game right here, and he saw what happened to the white center, and so therefore he holds that pawn back. Instead of going to d4, he just keeps it on d3. D6. The downside of that, of course, is that the advanced pawn on the E file has no support, except for the pieces. So bishop F4, bishop A6, and now here's a very strong move um, here from um, Grishuk. He plays knight B D2. He just leaves this pawn here. Now. Um, Rajabov decided not to take the pawn but continue his attack and he played queen b8 which of course supports the attack here but also attacks this pawn but there's a positional subtlety involved with this also in that this knight can now go to where the queen just vacated which is d8 and we'll see that here if Rajabov takes Bishop d3, which is again not losing or anything, like he, it can be taken. This is more of a positional sacrifice by Grishchuk. This is not a um, you know, sacrifice where he's trying to mate or you know, start a mating attack or something like that. e6, and notice now this knight on f7 has no real 
good place to go. Knight can only return uh, safely by cramping the king at h8. Then rook e3. Bishop a6. Again, this is just a sample line. Queen a4. Queen b6. Rook a1. h6. And then c4, for example. And, um, again, white is down a pawn, but I must say he has compensation. And that his position, he possesses some more space. And, um... White's knight, White's knight is really awkward on um, h8. But you never know. With further research, you might find that you can't take that pawn. But um, I trust I trust uh, Grishik and Rajabov on leaving that pawn on its own. So queen b8 was played. He takes. So instead of letting the pressure mount... Um, Rajabov decides to, excuse me, uh, T, uh, Grishchuk decides to open up the e-file by capturing. And now there's like a little unpleasant pin on a d6 pawn because of the queen on b8. Queen c2, protecting b pawn and d pawn respectively. And now queen d8, good move, just getting out of that opposition. It's always good to get out of the opposition like that. h4. Queen d7, knight c4, of course uh, putting pressure on a d pawn, but also inviting white to capture on c4 when the d pawn um, can, you know, fall, um, you know, under more pressure from white because the d file will now be open to the rook. So rook f8, Grishchuk develops his last piece, bishop takes e4. D takes c4. Now rook takes, rook takes, rook e8. Just offering a whole so wholesale exchange of pieces. Grishchuk tries to hang on to, you know, uh, some winning opportunities here, and he puts more pressure on this d pawn. Rook e4, g3, queen e6. So of course there's a price in giving up the e file like that. White. Uh, Black has just totally decided to take over the file, which he does. Queen a4. Grishchik is hoping to cash in on some of this pawn weakness on the queen side. Queen d7. Queen c2. Queen e6. A little bit of repetition here. And Grishchik decides that he's going to play on. He plays king g2. Bishop f8, and what it is here is that black has, um, you know, enough protection around the uh, weak d6 pawn, and that, um, you know, white is not really able to do to accomplish anything worthwhile against that pawn. Matter of fact, he has uh, some overprotection there because he has three pieces protecting d6. Rook e2. And queen c2 was played. I think it's worthwhile to point out because I, I looked at this during the game. And um, I said, well, not, you know, I was thinking about bishop e3. But then there's a stunning refutation to this move. Let's look at it. So if bishop e3, of course, the idea is simply to, you know, say, bring the king to f1 and snatch the rook. Or at least force him to give up the exchange. So if Grishchuk plays bishop e3, Rajabal has a great move due to his dominance of the e-file. He plays knight e5 here. Let's say king f1. He gives up the exchange, right? Rook takes e3, so mission accomplished. And after f takes e3, Rajabal would have the stunning continuation f4. What is the threat here? Well, let me show it to you. The threat is... Queen h3 check. Okay. And that would be mate. And quickly. With that threat in mind. We know that. White will have to defend. Against queen h3 check. So therefore. Let's say for example. King g2. Then simply move like f takes e3. 
and for example a move like knight b3 again this is just a sample just to show you how devastating the attack is queen g4 that would just be winning of course improvements could be found but that's the crux of re the reason why bishop e3 is not really fit to be uh, played here even though it looks like a good idea just cat just doing that this move f4 just exploits the weakened light squares around the king and the uh, weakened pawn structure around the king side in general therefore Queen c2 was played by Grishchuk, so he didn't he didn't have an oversight. Bishop h6, and Rajabov is just saying, hey, this is this is equal. I'm just you know he's just trading off, offering trades of pieces. Queen e7 maintaining his um, possession of the only open file. King f1 doesn't panic. He just simply goes back. Rook e6. Bishop takes e6. Knight takes h6. Knight f3. Notice there's two defenders and two protectors on the d6 pawn. Knight f7. And now there's the overprotection again. And what's good about overprotection is that it frees up all of your pieces. Because since black has three protectors of d6, any one of them can move. And there's always going to be two defenders. That's a principle of Nim Nimzovich. Or articulated by Nemzovich. Actually, all the all the great masters will show this in their games, but the one who actually wrote it down to paper, Nemzovich. So B4. So with this pressure on the D pawn not really working out for White. I think I said D4. I meant to say B4. Excuse me. With all this pressure, we're not really working out for White on the D file. He tries his hand on the B file, and the idea is to try to create a uh, uh, majority, uh, excuse me, a pass pawn <clears throat> by using this kind of majority on the queen side, which after, say, A4, if you can imagine, and then imagine the move uh, B6, B5, excuse me, and creating a pass pawn here. But Rajabal defends very well. There's A4. <clears throat> queen f6 and what I like about this is that Rajabov, um, you know he 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 doesn't you know grow lax in his defense and that he immediately sets up attacking opportunities on on uh, Grishik's uh, king side in order to offset his play on the uh, king side and that's a good game when you're playing defense you want to you want to try to have a game that even though white might have his his chances you want to make sure you have your chances too and it's not all one-sided play where you're just kind of hovering you know and cowering and hoping not to get you know defeated but that you have your chances too so king g2 f4 you see this opens things up for for the uh, black pieces so gives Grishchik something to uh, think about he plays g4 keeping things closed all right so now h6, this prevents g5, moves like that. So now b5, again, now you can see what I'm talking about. Say after, you know, if white had a few moves in a row, he would love to play a5. And then b5 right after that, creating, you know, a pass pawn up here somewhere, you know. C takes, C takes. And again, now you see the 2 to 1. So Grishchik's plan is... um. You know, right there for us all to see. Rook e7. Here, Gristic plays c4. And it looks pretty good because you have this pawn still backward. And now you have this 2 to 1. Alright, so basically if you can tie black down to one of these, then maybe you can, you know, either win the d pawn or something like that or create a pass pawn. Queen e6. And here is what I'm talking about with the counterplay. The play going two ways. Now, of course, White has his dreams, but now we have this pawn under attack. Yeah. Knight h2. Defending, but at the same time, taking the knight out of out of play. Grishchik plays queen f6. Attacking this pawn. Knight f3. And then we have the repetition. 
queen f6. And so that was a good game. It ended in the draw, but um, I wanted to show you because I felt it was a it was well played um, and good quality game. If king h3, for instance, you know, trying to hang on, you you have these type of moves: queen b2, rook d1, queen a1. You see, the point the point is is that black king g2, for instance, and then either queen takes a4 here. Or even returning back to queen f6. The point is, is that um, black can, you know, continue harassing and creating uh, counter chances. So this was a hard fought draw. I hope you um, learned. And please uh, like my videos and comment and uh, subscribe. All right. And suggestions are also welcome. I'll see you guys later.